That doesn't sound very impressive, but here's the other thing too that's really nice. This particular property, there's more meat on the bone. These rents are actually low. Now, something I want to bring your attention to why we look at the photos. I'm just going to run the photos up on the TV monitor for you, but something I want to bring your attention to that she said in her listing. She said it's right near the Detroit Shoreway, which is an up-and-coming area. She's absolutely correct. The Detroit Shoreway is an incredibly nice area, but where this property is, we need to be realistic. I need to give you the complete picture. This is not what I would consider a nice and up-and-coming area. This property right here, this property right here, this is pretty much D-class property, right? You're, you're very, very close to nice areas. So it's, it's, it's close, right? It's close to getting up into that sea. It's not like there's nothing going on here. She's right that, you know, there's nice stuff happening in this area. You might see some changes. But right now, you need to understand, this is very much a D-class property. You're going to deal with D-class tenants. But what I think you should do, and it goes hand in hand with in increasing the rents, right? I believe the proper move for this property is as these tenants filter themselves out, because they always do, right? This is D-class multifamily investing. These folks ain't going to live here forever, Shindog. Ain't nobody wants to live in Shindog's quad in a D-class neighborhood for the rest of their lives. That's not their childhood dream. But when we put in new tenants, we want to go with the Section 8 program. We should be able to get 650 minimum for each of the units. If we did that, we go Section 8, 8, we're reducing your risk that's associated with the lower quality neighborhood. And B, we're increasing those rents. We can get the monthly rent all the way up to $2,600 a month, which is an additional $535 a month in cash flow. And that's going right into your pocket, right? We don't really have to increase our expenses is too much to collect that additional rent. The money I've had you budget, the 103 for the repairs and maintenance, the vacancy and non-payment, the capital expenditures, just because we're pulling in more rent, more rent, these are still the same units. And as a matter of fact, you might need to budget a little bit less because, you know, we're going to have fewer turnovers now when we bring in the Section 8 folks because the government's paying their rent. They don't have to do much. We collect rent much more uh, frequently, right, our evictions on Section 8 tenants are way, 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 way down compared to low-quality, low-class, high-risk neighborhood cash-paying tenants, right? Those are the majority of the tenants we're evicting in these rougher neighborhoods and their cash-paying tenants. But when the government comes in and guarantees that rent money, we're not really evicting them all, too, all that much because, you know, what's there to not pay, right? The government's paying it. <laughs>